So I was just talking with Lacey. We were talking about um, this uh, beginner's guide to the recently deceased. And I've got several other books that are sort of like this. They're guides written for people that they're supposed to read after they're dead. And the first one I came in contact, and this is a really good exercise in title writing too, was E.J. Gold. Um, how I Raised Myself from the Dead in 49 Days or Less and You Can Too or Your Money Back Guarantee. Mm -hmm. So if you're dead and you buy a copy and listen to it and it doesn't work, you don't end up resurrected, you can ask for your money back. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, a, that's a head spinner there. Mm -hmm. Go, he's, a, he's an interesting guy. All right, well, so we'll, uh, a couple of things we'll wrap up on here that uh, kind of came up in our little uh, rest here is... Uh, uh, first item was uh, press releases and so David McInnes is really the guy that turned press releases into um, online content and he's got a specific word for it last time he was over he was telling me that word I'll have to go back and Evergreen. no um, there was a specific term he used about what he calls that Thing that he did when he he's basically the founder of PR Web. He talked about he it since he sold it. McKinnis. Talking about the new thing that he's doing. No, when he first started PR Web, he had in mind to do a specific thing, and he, it, oh, it, okay. it's a very elegant way of. I'll, I'll find, or I'll just ask him next time I'm talking with him to tell me that term again. But anyway, so up until pre DM days, and there's post DM days, so not Dungeon Master or Dominatrix. It's Dave McInnes. So um, I saw a fistful of dollars. I'm going to call you a fistful of dollars from now on. <laughs> Dominatrix, yeah. You, yeah so yeah, anyway, so you, you planted it. So um, uh, David McInnes basically founded PR Web, and he, up until that point, press releases were you actually sent them to people in the press. Journalists, of course, we ain't getting any of them anymore. Well, I'm kind of, but not really. And so, yeah, the first uh, the first really chunk of promotion I ever did was um, I bought a when I bought my first fax machine. It was a grand. It was expensive, and there weren't too many people. The main people that had fax machines were radio and television yep. stations because they could afford them. And so I ran my whole business off of press releases. I would write up basically a, a one page piece of copy that was um, like a sales page, but it was written in the form of a press release. And I would send those out to people, and I'd get on the radio and do interviews and, you know, hawk stuff. Um, and then McKinnis came along, and he said, well, you know, I could probably take those press releases and turn them into SEO, you know, spider bait, um, so that they're content that Google would like. And he's basically the, with PR Web, he's the guy that actually started the whole press release and news release um, uh I guess it really is a revolution because people people now when they send out a press release they don't even think about they think about sending out a press release online when I think about a press release I think about doing a media kit that actually has a physical press release a you know a physical book like that I can hold in my hand um, uh, maybe a set of testimonials maybe a set of uh, suggested questions that the interviewer can ask and then doing market research to figure out who I ought to send that package to. Um, so that, that's, that's what a real press release is. Now online, the problem with press releases at this point in time is that there's been so much abuse of the entire press release system that um, Google now, what they're using PR Web for is to, to find people on PR Web that are using PR Web and to delist the websites that are using PR web. So if you've got a press release and it points to what's the domain you're using, Clint? Uh, I've published through HistoWiki and a few others. Well, I mean, but give me some domain you, you own that you're using for something. ClintEvans.com. Okay, so so Clint Evans has got ClintEvans.com and he writes a press release about something and in his resource proc he's got ClintEvans.com. What Google is doing now is they're looking at PR web, they're looking for all the links that link out from press releases and penalizing every single one of those sites and sometimes throwing them completely out of the Google index. And the reason that started was with um, because somebody did the phony press release about a really negative phony press release about Google on PR web and it went out everywhere and it took months for that whole thing to unwind and Google just said well we're Google we don't like that 
And so we're just going to take out a big stick and beat everybody about the head and shoulders that uses press releases. And so the challenge with press releases is you may have the best press release ever, and it may be very useful and timely and uh, valuable. Problem is, depending on where you release that, uh, maybe the difference between getting a lot of press or the death knell of your entire website. Yeah. So my suggestion on press releases right now, unless you really, really know what you're doing and who you're working with and what their, um, what their process of editorial review is, um, just skip it for right now. You're way better off, um, you know, writing writing another Kindle book than spending yeah. the money to do a press release. Um, so that's that's my, you know, I'm sure Taggart and yeah. Burns would appreciate. Now Burns is actually uh, Taggart, and I think he's working. Is he working with Chris Ormanson? Are they working on that sure. thing together? Uh, so anyway, there's a couple of people working on systems together. Rob Burns is working on a system which actually is pretty interesting. What he's doing is taking press releases and he has some friends that have a really upscale uh, infomercial studio just right around the corner from his place in San Diego. And so he'll get a batch of press releases in and he'll get in his car and go down to the station and whoever the prettiest girl is that's working that day for whatever. As soon as they get to a break, he'll start handing them press releases, and they've got this green screen and that looks like a newsroom, and she'll read the press release, like a three, four, five-minute press release, like it's a news story. And it's always this constant rotation of new faces because it's whoever is working that day out of the, you know, the pool of whatever the, I don't know, where they get their talent. And he just shows up with a, you know, a stack of press and has them read it. And so he, his gig, what he's calling it is... Uh, I think video news releases or something. It's prreach.com. Is his yeah. what's Taggart's uh, site that he's doing? Uh, press he's got simple press release and then uh, uh, press release boot camp. Oh, okay. I guess I ought to go simple into simple press releases. I think simple. Would there be no value in putting out a press release without the links? Uh, if I was going to do a press release, I'd put them with no links. And I'll uh, let me write down. What was the other one? Press release boot camp. Press release boot camp is one, and then they're actually using Newswire.net. Yeah. And I think he has some connection to the, you know, whether he owns part of it or owns all of it. I don't know. Um. Yeah. So if you if I was going to put out a press release and just hopefully get some traction, I would do you know what you suggested. I would put a press release with no outbound links. And just target specific uh, uh, key phrases that, that um, Jeffrey Eisenberg calls them brandable chunks. There are things that stick in your mind, like um, uh, the beginner's guide to the recently deceased. That is probably going to stick in your mind mm -hmm. that because it's a, a really off the wall <clears throat> title. Um, Radical Health is a, a project that I've been running for years, so that's that's a, a something that people can associate and hook to in their mind. Um, and a lot of people do like what's your what's the name of Temple your Temple Without Boundaries? Yeah, Temple Without Boundaries, and I would probably do something that was more without is a sort of a down frequency where it like attenuates. So I would say the uh, I don't know temple in the ethers or something where it's a where it's an uptick on frequency and instead of a, a downtick yeah. on frequency but anyway so something that will stick in people's minds like wetware hacking is a topic i do a lot of content on. and so it's a all right <laughs> can you round those wolves up lacy <laughs> lacy has a relationship with the wolves so she might be able to wrangle them up um, let's see if I can. So yeah, so uh, prreach.com is uh, is uh, uh, Rob system, and I other than know if Taggart and Ormanson are working together, I'll ask uh, Chris next time I talk with him. But that uh, Angel, come here, honey, stay in here, be good. Uh, let's see, and then you were asking about giveaway books, yes. so. Uh, but, uh, there used to be a way to send books to people at no charge to get reviews, but that's all gone now. Okay. Um, and so, you know, one way that you can do that is if you have um, a list of reviewers you'd like to send uh, copies of your book to, 
what you can do is you can go into Amazon and flip the the uh, cost of the book over to zero and then send out a bunch and then flip it back to whatever you're selling it. Is that the way you're doing it, Clint, or are you doing that right now? Uh, I usually just do it at 99 cents and either trade out reviews or do whatever they need. Yeah, so, but, but for 99 cents, that means if you send to 100 people, then you gotta pay 100 times 99, because you, you have to pay for it. If you, it. if you send it to somebody as a gift, then you have to pay for it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, uh, just something to keep in mind. Um, and you mentioned downloading book, never, ever, ever do that. Okay. Because if some, if that gets loose in the wild someplace, then you're going to get delisted in Amazon. It's just not worth it. Okay. Um, you, mean, you mean uploading a book? Or what well, he was saying I'll, I'll give, give away the PDF of the book to people. Oh. And mm -hmm. the problem with that is that, you know, if it escapes out into the wild, then there's a chance that Amazon might say or might think that it's either uh, not unique content. So they ask you when you go through the process of publishing, is this unique content? And if you click no, the commission goes to 30%. If you click yes, it goes to 70%. I mean, you can see it right there. And unique means that they're the only ones that have it. So the way you get around that is uh, when you're publishing, what you publish on your websites and other ancillary materials are subsets or rewording of, um, of what you have actually in your book. Uh, and then... Um, uh, yeah, one of the things that Clint brought to my attention about CreateSpace here recently, which I hadn't thought about, is that I'm going to have to go back and fix my tool where I can have multiple themes associated with the book. So I've got a digital theme or skin and also a CreateSpace uh, skin. Because if you look at my book, my book is very link rich. It has all sorts of links to different things. And if you're publishing a book like, um, this is a really simple book. I should have brought down one that was a... Yeah, that would be funny in a print book. All these things are underlined and yeah, <laughs> like it, click on any of them. Yeah, like here's a good example of, um, you know, where you've just got a few bolded headers and subheads and text. Um, so it occurred to me that I should probably go back and give some consideration to how to take a, um, uh, a, a skin that I've got for a digital book and turn it into a... Uh, and it might just be a set of rules that changes the way links work, yeah. which probably would be. But then also colors are really expensive on Create Space. Oh. Yeah, you want to go black and oh, white. Oh, black and white or gray tones. So anything that's... Can, you can have co color on your cover and color on your back. Uh, they, they don't charge for gray shades of gray, right? That, no, that's just considered work. black and white, yeah, right? Yeah, I think so, it's black, white, and gray so, uh, interior. Yeah, so, the gray, so what you do is you'd have to figure out, they probably got a list of the published colors that are considered in the gray scale someplace. I don't know, I have to look for Possibly, it. Possibly, yeah. So you can, you can slightly change the variation of uh, the reader's experience by using shades of black yeah. and white. Okay. And that's, the, that's what you have to do on Create Space. And Clint's right on. I mean, the, the Create Space is the next thing I'm going to go after, too, on um, uh, all, the, all the books that I'm, I have on my list to publish right now. I'm thinking about how I publish those both digitally and in Create Space as physical books. One of my books is almost ready. It's under the review, and I'm going to get the, the proof copy to me to make sure everything printed out. Awesome. Good deal. Cool. So you're saying um, with the, the color scheme, black and white printing, is that also applicable to CDs and DVDs? Uh, ask your question in a different way. Um, in Create Space, it sounds like you're having to select whether your color scheme for the. Well, print. if you have colors in your book, it'll automatically sense that. Okay, and so it'll, if you have purple underlined links or something like that, or blue or something, your price for yeah, and one single link that's blue will charge you for every page. I mean, it's yeah, it's either color, color charge yeah. or not, because they have to basically. I don't know how they do it. I guess they have to set up a plot. Well, it's print on demand, so maybe it goes to a different machine or something. Yeah, got me. It probably goes to a different machine that runs a lot slower, and probably uses ink in a very different way than just a black and white. Uh, print-on-demand machine, you know, I guess, I, other than know what kind of equipment they have. And I'm, un I'm unsure exactly how the print-on-demand stuff works for... Have you printed any Tim, Tim stuff or any of your stuff in the print-on-demand stuff in as a CD or a DVD or something in the uh, Amazon? No. I hadn't done that either. Yeah, I'm sure if you're doing CDs and DVDs, you can have full color art on your 
front and back casing without a problem. It'd probably even a color yeah. label on the actual disc itself. Maybe, yeah. I, I don't think that would be a problem. Yeah. That seems yeah. Okay, that's what Because Amazon saying. wants a quality experience for their buyers, so mm -hmm. they like a color a lot better than a CD and a, you know, just a clear mm -hmm. case, like a $2 case that you got at the yeah. fries or whatever. I think that got all the questions that seem to come up here. Um, so the the next big question is, uh, what do we do next? What do you like to do next, Clint? Pistol of dollars. All right. Yeah. Let's let's talk about the dollars. Some of the promotion tactics to so promotion get next. your book out there and use it as a springboard into your client work or higher uh, yeah higher price training. I'm still working on my um, publishing a version of my. Uh, book generation tool so people can play around with it um, right. and, I, I've, and I, I, I think I've worked it out where I can do that in a WordPress sort of environment where it's a little bit easier to use for people than trying to I, I thought about going going at it from a different standpoint but I think that uh, WordPress is going to be the optimal way to yeah the mindset of your book as a lead generation tool and not trying to make hundreds of thousands or millions in royalties, which very few authors ever do. So, say, that, say that again? or The mindset of your book is your lead generation, hmm. or one of your lead generation tools versus a lot oh, of people yeah. think, I'm going to write a book and be like um, you know, Stephen King or some of those guys that make their full living with millions of dollars. It's Those guys are probably less percentage of authors get to that level than baseball players that ever get to the major leagues. So and that's probably a good thing to put on the list too is uh, back end for books because um, I mean you can like I've, I've worked out in my head that it, it that probably it, if I did nothing else but have around 60 books published um, then that would be you know roughly at minimalistic sales levels, um, you know, ten or fifteen grand after taxes a month. So I just that's just, in my mind. I'm just working on my fifty books, and I suspect that that number will be a lot larger. The back end income from that will be a lot larger because I'm coming up with things like software tools to to back end, for example, or. Um, you know, you might do like a, I don't know, consulting about how to make your house green or, mm -hmm. I don't know, green energy or something. Right. Or how to reduce your your uh, cost of, electro of electricity or something. Um, so that probably having back-end stuff would be good, too. Or any anything that's um, on your list of uh, what your next... Um, uh, I'm still evolving into what I'm doing. I knew, I knew I wanted to write this book, this series of books. I've actually got 12 of these books written. I come from a teaching background, and that's mostly what I'd like to do. Well, so you have when you say 12 books written, what does that physically look like? Are they they're like PDFs these. or they're physical? Okay, so they're physical books like this, and um, are they in print? The, these are these are all twelve books are in in print form. So they're physical books, and where can can I go to like to Amazon and uh -huh. find these and buy? Them? Yep, they're all on Amazon. And do you have them in Kindle also? Uh huh. Okay, good. My my original. I'm still evolving who I am and my myself. I know I wanted to write these books. It was just a mission that I wanted to do for yeah. myself. I'm a teacher. I'm. I see myself. I'd like to teach some courses. Um, Traditionally, I'd like to teach my own types of courses. I'd like to do some public speaking as a, as a paid public speaker. These are some of the things that have crossed my mind. Well, keep in mind also that speaking and speaking as a paid public speaker are probably antithesis. Um, there are very few speaker fees paid anymore. Okay. And you'll make way more money anyway. I mean, I never charge anything for speaking. If, if, it, if there happens to be, uh, you know, some... Um, Reimbursement for travel or something—that's great. Right. But you better have a deep back end so that you, when you speak someplace, that turns into potentially millions of dollars of revenue over, you know, decades of time. Right. So, so what would you suggest? Then you're saying that you're saying that speaking. Well, that's having a. So I'm saying that the people that make the most money speaking yeah. charge this much for their fee. Okay. Because what they make on the back end is astronomical. Okay. Okay. With their, their, so they're, they're establishing thought leadership. So they in, a, in a way, yeah, that's a good way of saying it. 
and they're an expert want, on their topic yeah yeah and so then you want to buy their program to go deeper on the topic that the speaking engagement is just to let the, let the audiences whistle qualified leads basically qualified leads. Okay. so I'll give you an example so one of the one of the talks the most common talks I give which mm -hmm. probably nobody in this room but except maybe fistful of dollars over here now. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love that. That's just, you're, you're forever. We're going to have to get you a t-shirt with uh, Clint on the front and the poncho. Like to wear my six shooters. And yeah. The, the hat. In Texas, you could do that and not yeah. get arrested. Too. I've ridden horses. I don't know. Yeah. So um, uh, one of the most common topics that I speak about, public speak about, is uh, how to uh, set up really high performance websites. Yeah. So most people, if they're lucky, they can get two or three requests a second. In other words, two or three people, two or three requests sent from a browser to the server and back in a yeah. second. And the ones that I'm turning up now for clients are um, the minimum I ever release is five thousand. Wow. And so when I give a talk about that, I don't charge for the talk, and I give right. away all the information to set it up because I know you know ninety nine percent of the people that start down this track. They get this, you know, they get this checklist of, you know, 100 things to do, and they get to about item number three, and they go, you know, they give up uh, because their tech team that they've got working for them um, might be technical to the people paying them, but their actual technical expertise is way low down on the right. pole okay. compared to the, all the technical expertise there is in the world. And they will pay you for... Yeah, so in that case, I'll do things like um, I'll charge a couple hundred bucks to go through and just... Um, run my tools on a person's website to tell them, you know, here are the, you know, the bottlenecks of, and here's what you have to fix. Okay. And then if they like, and they can turn that video and checklist over to their tech team to do it. And when they do that and their tech team, you know, nine times out of 10 can't do it. Right. Then I charge 200 bucks an hour just to work on that one thing, just to tune up their website. Gotcha. Okay. And I do that in my environment though, and I get it tuned, but then usually when I put it in their environment, it still works really slow because they've got really bad server environments. Mm -hmm. So then the next upsell is, well, I let me set up a dedicated server for you. And then the next upsell is, let me do the admin on that server for you. Okay. So there's a, so if you think through all the, the um, basically I give away the farm. Mm -hmm. Here's everything I know about doing this thing. Right. And most people though, even when they have that information, they're unable to figure out how to do it. Okay. So you can probably find some way to do something like that. Come up with a like a you know a menu of uh, consulting services that you offer or courseware. Mm -hmm. So maybe you take um, you know one of these books and maybe you can explode this out into. Let's see how many chapters this has got here. Uh, so this has got ten chapters. So maybe you could ex uh, expand this to ten videos and sell a course for 40 or 100 or 200 or whatever okay. dollars. And then an additional uh, back-end item to that, well, I guess we're talking about back-ends now. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I was talking with uh, the SEO mastermind uh, group that we were talking about a minute ago. and. Um, uh, one way that you can create an ongoing, really easy continuity income for yourself is to do some sort of back-end forum. So it's just thinking membership. Yeah, it's yeah. Kind of a membership model. And you don't have to really work at that. You just have to, you know, um, the way that I'm going to set that up is if you, if you look at the, um, if you go to wordpress.org and you click on the blog link, that takes you to the back end development and then over in the right hand side here it has the development blog and you click on that link and once you get in there that's the WordPress core development team and the curious thing about that system that you will see presented to you is that what it is is a dramatic um, uh, rehash or um, what would I call it um, uh, there's probably a I think I was writing some notes about that a minute ago. I guess a, a recast is, the, is a good word. So it's a recasting of Twitter. And so where Twitter is 140 characters and it scrolls across your screen, scrolls across your screen, mm -hmm. what, um, what the WordPress development team did is they came up with a theme that allows you to do uh, posts in real time of any length. Mm -hmm. You can include any type of media. It could be videos or images or whatever. And those are arranged in threads by topic, kind of like a back-end forum system. Mm -hmm. But they're in real time. So you could have, for example, uh, I was talking with Rob Burns about this 
to do like a, a forum for press releases. Yeah. You could say that my office hours are, you know, eight to ten. Uh, this Monday through Wednesday, Wednesday, I'll be online from eight o'clock to ten o'clock Central Standard Time in the morning. And when people ask a question, it's just like Twitter; it's real time. It's all Ajax. So it's not you have to ask a question, and hit return, and then it goes into back end, and somebody has to hit refresh to actually see it. Everything's in real time by way of Ajax. So it's just like Twitter. You type something in and hit return. Everybody that's camped on the topic sees it. Oh. It's like being in, sort of in go to meeting. Yeah. Um, but everything is arranged by thread. So you can have different, for example, if you're doing uh, uh, different topics or you've got multiple projects, yeah. then you can arrange them by thread. So you can go back and search them. Right, so all of the intelligence instead of just being lost in the Twitter sphere, mm -hmm. who knows where the bits from Twitter right. go? Uh, and I choose to know if there. I guess maybe there's some kind of search engine, but I choose to know how you'd make sense of all the. There's so much junk on Twitter, but you could put you know potentially come up with you know maybe there's a maybe there's a video course that goes with every book, mm -hmm. and there's also a uh, back end conversational uh, support thread that goes along with that. And maybe if you buy all ten courses, then you know you get a you know a discount, so you can bundle them or unbundle them okay. different ways. So does that give you some ideas? Yeah, I give you some ideas. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. yeah, and the membership model um, would allow you to, to teach on a regular basis. So you know you buy yeah. a, a 999 membership every month or 997, I think converts better. Mm -hmm. a membership oh, yeah. model uh, every month, and you get to come to you know two classes or two hour long classes, which then capture your content, republishes a webinar, replays, all that type of stuff. Okay. So if you come yeah. to the original webinar, I participate in Q&A, and we can go deeper on the topic, or you can listen to the replay, you know, so. Gotcha. I'm a novice at all this. Uh, technology's changed so much in the last five years since oh, I first right. deployed. Oh, time. But uh, I've been studying like crazy since I got back. I'm awesome. convinced that technology's moved in the direction of, mm -hmm. of authors, and it seems oh, yeah. that I keep getting mm -hmm. reinforcement of that. Mm -hmm. But I ran across this one thing, and I haven't really done much digging in to find out about it. It's called Udemy. Have you heard of Udemy.com? Yeah, it vaguely rings a bell. Because they're, they're set up specifically, if I understand the model right, for people to offer classes of all sorts. Well, there's it, it, there are it, hundreds of those. Yeah. The the, mo the largest is probably Lynda.com and most Which established. One? Lynda L Y N D A. Oh, okay. So if you go to Lynda.com and look at their model, um, the challenge with Lynda is they don't. Or the last time I checked, they um, they just had everything published that they'd ever put up as courseware. So there's no way to go in and, for example, at, there were hundreds of courses on WordPress too. Now, who in their right mind would install WordPress 2 for anything? So there's a lot, it's kind of like Google, there's a lot of junk there. And I wish that they would go back in and say that, you know, this whole set of content has been, um, you know, archived. It's been obsoleted and here's the new stuff that you, in other words, don't go spend a bunch of time watching WordPress 2 videos because they, you know, don't apply because we got WordPress 3 now. Uh, but you can go look at the Linda model and see. Another really good one is uh, to look at their model is uh, 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 WPMUDev.org. They have a really interesting uh, business model. They, they turn out um, courseware and plugins and themes for WordPress and BuddyPress uh, and also multi site WordPress. Mm -hmm. And they have like a, it's like a membership site, it's the Till for Bid. Uh, and they go through and curate all the code to make sure the code actually works. So the benefit of using them is that every time WordPress comes out with a new release, all their code works or will very shortly because they've got thousands of people using common code. Yeah. And if something breaks, they'll go fix it and you can get an update really well, fast. I was struggling for I put a, a, a blog and it's, and it's up, but there's virtually cool. nothing on it. You know, a couple of months ago, it was WordPress. I mm -hmm. got uh, all out of date. So. You head now? Yeah. Take care, buddy. Right, I Ciao. got the domain, um, which is just my name, LeeJackson77.com. Mm -hmm. And um, after I got it, I became aware of, you got, I guess, WordPress.com and you got WordPress.org. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know the difference between the two when I, when I got the domain. I'm not sure I really understand it now. Except well, the that. simple difference is WordPress.org is where the development for the code base lives. 
that's where you can down, download a copy of WordPress for free and install it on domain. It's also where all the announcements come out to, you know, what's going on. Like if you go click on the blog link right now, it'll say, at least it did this morning, you know, WordPress uh, 3.6 or beta 3 is available. Don't use it on your production servers, but it's here for you to play with. And then WordPress.com is actually, they do hosting of WordPress. But you got to be real careful of those guys because they are a bunch of, well, I shouldn't say criminals. Mm -hmm. If you watch their videos, they make it seem like, oh, if you come to WordPress.com and put up your blog here, you'll get rich. But if you read the fine print, what they say is you can't do anything commercial on here, we'll throw you out. Uh, or if you build up a big enough following, we will tell you what advertising you can run. And oh, by the way, we'll actually do that for you because you don't need to pour your privilege. Are they the same organization? No, no, well, just let me finish. And, and so, and we'll also, we'll give you half of that revenue, but we'll pick the ad so you never know what's running. They aren't the same, they aren't really the same organization. WordPress.com is a hosting service for the WordPress blog system and WordPress.org is the the uh, development community that works on WordPress. Okay. So that's so, the difference. So it sounds like the best world then is to have what you know, WordPress.com that you're using as your what platform or I don't know. And then have it. No, WordPress the software is the platform. WordPress.com is just a hosting service like HostGator or Bluehost or Rackspace. That was, that's all they do. Probably like the original WordPress, which was strictly blogging. But now WordPress.org, where you can download, I mean, all the WordPress sites that are out there have blogging as kind of the, the back-end engine, but now that it's been modified and upgraded in a zillion different ways. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's kind of the, the website platform of choice now. So you're in the blog area. You okay. probably don't have all the full features and functionality that you can download from WordPress.org, but you, if you're not just all that techie, you kind of have to either take a class or hire a web developer to just hook up your domain with your with your hosting and download WordPress, get a theme on top of it, and then you can start learning how to post all your own pages, web pages as well as blog pages, or even e-commerce. So it's very extensible, very expandable once you download the WordPress platform, but you're just you're kind of stuck on the blog only side. If you only want to do a blog, that's great. But if you want to do a bunch of other stuff, yeah. then create a website using the WordPress platform. But if you're using your own domain, you're using the WordPress.org platform. You're not using WordPress.com. If you were, you would be LeeJackson.wordpress.com. Yeah, exactly. That's using yeah. WordPress.com, yeah. which you don't want to do. I want it the way I've got it. Yeah, yeah. You know, avoid WordPress.com right, huh? because WordPress.com is just so um, uh, you just never know when they're going to pull the rug well, out from under you. Can't convince me what I need to do is probably find a new host. Is that difficult to do? To no, not at all. Why would you need to find a new well, host? Well, I, mean, I guess it depends on what. You, yeah, are you is it hosted somewhere now? Uh, by you know the the WordPress dot whatever. Oh, okay. <laughs> thanks everybody. It would have been blogspot dot com had I not gone in and put my own domain in. So that's where it's hosted. Yeah, I don't really understand exactly what what you're saying, but basically, you you the way it works is you register a domain and you have that domain. And then you know where where did you register your domain? Like at GoDaddy, WordPress. I, mean, I went over there. So I, I, okay. I, I went over there. All right. So just just very simply, just about domains. If you've got your domain with anybody except GoDaddy, you really ought to uh, change it to have it, have that domain transferred to GoDaddy um, because they're one of the few domain serving companies that has your best interest in mind. And they actually have a legacy. In other words, they're they're an honest to gosh company with a board of directors. There was a company that nobody knows what happened to the guy. Um, I can't remember what the name of the company was. Anyway, it was one guy that was basically, had set up a company, one man show, and was buying resources from other domain providers and just funneling all the domains through him to these other providers. And he was up to something like 900,000 domains, and something happened to him. He obviously is dead. Wow. Nobody ever found the body. Nobody. Did. He just. Di he literally disappeared off the planet. Nobody knows what happened to him. Sounds like he went into virtual reality. Well, what what the what happened with all those domains then was that uh, 900,000 domains. Time goes by. Time goes by until he gets his next bill. Money is flowing from all these people in his bank account, but he's dead. 
so no money is getting paid out of his bank account to pay his. So 900,000 domains went dark all together one day. Wow. 900, uh, now that was a, it was like the, yeah. it was the big talk of the web. Wow. It wasn't register, <laughs> register fly, was it? Uh, it may have been register fly. But anyway, so basically, <laughs> basically what the, what the ICANN did, the government organization that um, is the, uh, the folks in charge of, you know, handing out dot-com addresses. Uh, they basically did this big, long uh, due diligence on all the providers, and they found that really GoDaddy was the only real one. Really? And they gave these 900,000 domains. They just gave them the do GoDaddy. Mm -hmm. That's how that's what, that's what how big a difference there was between, they said the primary things they looked at were their in infrastructure and their legacy plan. In other words, if somebody dies at GoDaddy, what happens? And it's actually a company with a board of directors. You mean, you mean somebody on the board or, some, or one of the people who owns the website? Somebody no, somebody at GoDaddy. In other words, it's a real company. So yeah. that means if somebody at GoDaddy, <laughs> if the president gets hit by a bus, then the board of directors convenes a, a board of directors meeting and they vote somebody else into that position. It's a real company. And so my recommendation is just you know make sure that you have your domains if there's someplace well, I, else. I went through a uh, demonstration. Of, I guess it was um, Gator, Host Gator, Host mm -hmm. Gator, and they seemed like they had a, a different set of control panels. That you They're all different, yeah. Okay. And so the the other the the the, the, the probably a more important question to ask is why or do you even have a, a domain at all? And so once you answer that question, though, you'll more likely find that having a domain is good uh, and your primary focus in the beginning is going to be probably publishing Kindle books and working meetup. Because the, I mean, the normal reason people do some project is they've got some service to life to offer and they also have some um, uh, requirement for, you know, money to pay their light bill and their, you know, car payment and things like that. So if that's the case, then you know worrying about becoming an expert at WordPress is way down low on your priority list. Okay. Better to put money in the bank account first. Well, I have at least to me sites yeah. at several places, and I moved my stuff to GoDaddy about eight or nine years ago because they're so much they're so much more accessible in terms of talking with them. Yeah, they've got they're they've got a really big staff there, and they seem to be um, the the only thing I use them for is uh, domain registration, and they seem to be very uh, responsive when I have a question, which well, is rare. A couple of sites with them, uh, and um, I just you know do it off of the templates they've got, make mm -hmm. some variations on the templates, but man, they're they're so helpful, they're so civil. That, and that's a good point too. Is they're civil, yes. Yeah. Yes, you host your own? Yeah, I, I run my own. I run my own iron, which means I I put up my own servers and do my admin and everything. Yeah. I got around two. All right. Well, we, we've been we're, we're a little bit over time, so we'll go ahead and wrap this time, and we'll next time I, I think I'll um, we'll focus on um, hopefully I'll have my tool up and running by then, so people can play with uh, publishing converting books and um, we'll talk about promotions some more then. This is really interesting. Good. Well thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, it's good to meet you.